Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be on my interview experience at Imperial, applying for medicine, and I hope you guys enjoy. I did the interview for Imperial where it was the first year that they changed to do the interview style as an MMI. So I remember having to go through the process of applying and there is a lot that Imperial look at when they are choosing people to pick for interviews. So at the beginning of applying, you obviously want to make sure that your personal statement and your overall application is what they want for the university. I checked recently on their website and what they ask for from an applicant hasn't changed. So they do look at your BMAT scores, they do look at your personal statement, your referee report, and they have certain things which they want to look at and find from those reports and grades and stats and things like that. So in terms of those, those haven't changed that much, if anything. However, I did have a look at the BMAT schools and what they require. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they have lowered the BMAT requirements to 3.5 in the first two sections and then 2.5C in the essay, which is quite low. Um, and I think generally speaking, a lot of the interviewees um, who end up with an interview don't have BMAT schools that low. And that's normally because other parts of their application are quite strong and so naturally their BMAT scores would be stronger anyway. What you can find though are people who are very academic and very like STEM heavy and they often fall short at the essay. So with UCL they place a big emphasis on the essay although I don't think they do really anymore now um, in terms of how they pick an applicant. I remember when I had my interview at UCL they didn't have the essay in the interview but with Imperial 2.5c is quite low um, so I feel like loads of applicants would probably be okay in terms of that um, but I know that there were people who did get interviewed um, and their first few sections were great but the essay was where they fell really short and that often meant that they couldn't apply to universities like UCL at the time because they heavily placed an emphasis on the essay but um, Imperial was a great option because yes they're really academic but maybe fell a little bit short with the essay. In regards to the BMAT and personal statement that should be good. Um, that's kind of all you need to secure an interview and I would say like the better your stats, the better quality your personal statement and referee is, the higher chance of gaining an interview invite because ultimately they have, again on their website it says over 2,400 applications and the better you are the more you're going to stand out and be one of those people who get invited to their interviews. So um, moving on to when I had my interview. So again I spoke to some people who were in the above years about the interview process and now obviously they had it during the times where it was a panel. I felt like what they were looking for from the interview applicant has definitely changed to what they look for now. So from what I found out from speaking to academics at the time who were at the university and also students, they basically wanted to use the interview as an opportunity to get to know you more as a person because they know you on paper, they kind of know what you, you know, what you're like um, and they kind of just want to know a bit more about you and I think there was a person who literally said um the interviewer just spoke about baking or something because that was a hobby that they had mentioned and that was the majority of the interview and they got an offer so yeah it definitely has changed since then and so when I was going into my interview even though I knew it was an MMI setup I still kind of thought that that was the general um, like mission of the interviewers and that was to like find out if you're like a good sort of person. So I think based on the kind of advice that I had received from um, academics, professors and students, I thought going into my exam, they would still pretty much want to see if your personality fits medicine and you as a person would be suited for this medical school. But going into it, it really wasn't that. So it was 
more so like of course you had stations which would want to assess your personality how you think um and what you're like but there were definitely stations which required you to have a bit more of an understanding of like how medicine works medicine in the nhs um do you know certain guidelines and things like that or they don't necessarily ask you directly but i think within your answers you should embed it with a few of these things and that's what my feedback said um from imperial is that we wanted to kind of see more content so what i can take from that is they probably wanted to see more like you know me explicitly stating guidelines and sources in my answers um which i definitely looking back on um felt like i could have added more or probably had prepped more for the interview but again because in my head I kind of thought, okay, they're going to be assessing for personality most likely because this is what they had been doing for so many years. So for the interview, like, of course, I still did a bit of preparation, but I definitely didn't do as much as I probably should have in terms of the content because I kind of went off of previous advice, which is to kind of make, like, make sure that your personality shines through, um, that you're super social, funny lively essentially what you would want a doctor to be um because i feel like especially at these um quite rigorous academic universities you might have some people who might be a little bit socially awkward um and super um book smart but those don't necessarily make the best doctors i think in terms of understanding the science and the medicine behind things is great but when you have a clinician, you want them to be able to talk to a patient and show signs of empathy and sympathy. Um, and sometimes you don't necessarily have that with some people. So that's kind of um, why I didn't do as much preparation as I probably should have for my Imperial interview. Um, but yeah, so just don't think that personality can get you through an interview because it can to some degree, but also just ensure that you know just a little bit more about like how the system works and just like extra guidelines just so you can throw it in to like jazz up your answers because i think that that would be so much better okay so now i'm going to talk about kind of the interview itself like what happens on the day um the setup and all of those things so before we came in I think for one of the stations we had to do a bit of prep because we had to sign NDAs and literally hand them in at the table. I can't tell you exactly what the questions were. Um, but yeah, we for one of them, we had to do a bit of prep and bring that in and hand it in and then we'd get asked on that. So that wasn't too bad, I would say. Um, also, when you like sign in, you have to give in your ID, you have to give in your NDA and you have to give in this extra slip. And then you get taken to this room you kind of get a briefing from students and you like leave your belongings there and everything and then they take you to the interview circuit so after we get our briefing in the room in SAF, i think it was one of the g rooms which is the study rooms at the back um they take you to a big room it's not held or again it may have changed but it wasn't held in the medical building it was done across the quad so we had to walk across and then enter that building there I forgot the name of it but we did it in there we actually had to hang our coats up and then we started so part of the process we actually had some medical students as well um they were the ones who did the timings and like the bells for when you change um and there was actually a station where two students would ask you questions um and i loved that station it was actually really great and i just like vibed really well with the students and for me in that moment i was like honestly i could see myself being here um i can't like i knew that beforehand anyway like i had been to so many events um at imperial related to medicine to stem and i loved the area i loved the facilities they have um the people I just felt like I related really well and so that station I actually got really really good feedback so I was really really happy with that and I think in the moment I kind of just knew that my answers for this particular station was just really good because I vibed so well and a lot of what I said hadn't been said before by other students and um, 
yeah and that was the question actually was built around how i would fit in at imperial um and there's lots about me as a person and my previous experience at imperial and being in the area um which basically helped so it definitely helps if you've been there before and you like have genuine reason as to like why you like the university and for me i felt like that that really shone through because of my previous experience and yeah so that was a great station but there were other stations as well basically after every interview that i've had i just make a list of what happened so if i can ever like look back i can look back and like see how i did and what i did um and yeah which i think is really helpful for me and also other applicants as well um so yeah there were six stations there were five minutes each um and they were kind of pretty much your standard mmi rotation questions i'm not going to go into too much detail because of nda reasons but in terms of what you think an mmi is that's kind of the type of questions that you will be asked um again we were the first year to do it so i'm sure that they are acting upon the feedback so things may have changed but that is kind of what i had experienced so after the interview we were brought back to one of the study rooms at saf the medical building and the student basically debriefed us and then we had the opportunity to tour the university now at this point i had literally been there so many times but um i did go on it just to like have one last look around and it was really cool because we got to see parts of the university that we wouldn't otherwise be able to have a look at if you are wondering like what to wear for this interview i can't remember if they actually gave advice in terms of like what you should wear but generally speaking i would just say stick with smart casual um but in my interview rotation um some of the students had like a variety of things on so i remember we had this um girl who wore like a bodycon short dress and like adidas trainers um and then we had another person with like heavy liner and lots of facial piercings but again that's fine what i'm trying to say is essentially if you have like a personal style don't be afraid to like express that because it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't get an interview or you'll be seen as unprofessional um but if i did have to go by advice i would personally stick with smart casual um so yeah and for me i had like a few extra piercings but i removed them essentially you can wear what you want like no one's going to stop you or tell you off but um yeah you could just be mindful because some people might be a little bit more traditional okay so overall in regards to clothing don't worry too much because the interviewers are going to be interested in you and what you have to say and what your beliefs and thoughts are regarding medicine if they judge on what you're wearing i don't think that's particularly fair but again just be aware some might have that like in the back of their minds but you know just play it safe wear what you feel most at ease in and yeah if you want to show your personality through your clothing then you can um but i would just say keep it smart casual and you can interpret that as you wish um so yeah okay and just a quick note on the um interview questions and the interview and like what they ask um i would say have a look on their website because they actually tell you exactly what themes are going to be assessed on the stations and it's something that not a lot of universities do what imperial do is they actually like say okay we're gonna assess x amount of stations and these are the themes that we're going to be assessing and those again for me match exactly what was in the mmi so they don't make things vague or hard they actually tell you what themes they will be assessing and i feel like if i go into any more depth i would probably be telling you the exact questions so i feel like what they already have on the website is super helpful as it is um so definitely have a look at what they have if you have an interview invite and do practice questions around them because i feel like they would help you so much and also just another thing looking on their website they have a different style this year for 2023-2024 um applicants so it's like it's in two parts one is asynchronous and one is synchronous so again just make sure you have a look at that um 
and hopefully that like can familiarize and like help you make sure that you like know the system um particularly what software they would be using for example um in my ucl video i talk about how i didn't actually know there was two interviews in the meeting until the other one spoke because of my settings um where only the person speaking would show their face so just be aware of the software that they're using and like how it works if you have an opportunity to run through that then perfect um but if not just try and be aware and just try and stay calm as possible um and if something unexpected happens in the interview like or something pops up or anything just um try to like look neutral as much as possible even in person yeah if something happens and you're just like oh my gosh don't show it on your face just try to remain calm because also i think that just shows the interviewer that if something happens to happen in a clinical setting that's unexpected you're not going to act in an unprofessional way or like show it on your face but you can like maintain your demeanor and just be professional which i think is um essentially what they want and they would probably look for anyway so yeah overall i hope that gave you like a better understanding of how they pick interviewees and gave you a bit of an insight into what the interview process is like particularly on the day but again do note that changes will happen all the time um little things might change like for example this year a part of it is going to be video recording and a part of it is going to be possibly in person so i hope you enjoyed the video i will be making more videos on other universities that i got interviewed at as well as um, other medical and lifestyle videos do check my channel for the other videos at other universities that i've already made